Guys, welcome back to Bill Nane Easy. It's Dakota. I am Lori. And we've had an eventful week. We have had an eventful week. What has happened? Well, it's been an eventful week from Kansas City. God bless. What happened? So the kicker, Butker, Butker, is that his name? He uh, gave a commencement speech at Benedictine College, which is like this little tiny college mm-hmm. close to Kansas City or like, it's I think it's on the Kansas side. Um, but it's a Catholic college, and he, they asked him to give the commencement speech, and he went hard into some super controversial, like, women should stay home and be a homemaker, and oh men God. should not allow themselves to be emasculated. And What do you think about it? And Biden is a hypocrite and, and made a joke about Pride Month and how it's, like, shameful. I mean, I just think... Wow. <laughs> I, I don't I don't really know how in this day and age people are not just like down for whatever. Like if someone else's choices are not affecting you, why do you care? Yeah. Right? Like if it's not hurting anyone, why do you care? And why do you care who someone loves or is sleeping with? I I don't I really don't get that. It affects you zero. Okay, here's a question for you. This was an interesting predicament I found myself yesterday. Okay. So I went to uh, see a friend, got a quick little barbecue, caught up. We talked about life. It was really good. And I'm leaving the barbecue place. He left a a second before me. And this woman comes up, and she's in, like, a hospital gown. And she's like, hey, can I talk to you? And I'm like, you know that moment. You're like, oh, This is what happens when you go to Dallas. This is when you go to Dallas, right? She's going to talk to you. And I go... Uh, yeah, like, what's up? And she goes... She wants money. Can, no, she goes, hey, can you give me a ride? Oh, you can't do that. You'll get killed. Yeah, she's like, can you give me a ride? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I have somewhere to go. And she goes, oh, I'm just trying to go, like, right up the street. Like, to Murphy. She says Murphy or something. Like, I don't know, a gas station. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> and I walked away. And partially, I felt like I was going to get killed. But also, my car was a little dirty, right? <laughs> like those, okay. those, those Scott, are my two reasons. Two, and, and another what? thing, how much barbecue sauce did you have on you? Because I didn't who, have any. I didn't have any. who takes you to a barbecue place? I had a little park. <laughs> I, had, I was in a park at like a, like a, a little. A bib. Oh. No, I had a little jacket, so I was protected. But you should have had a bib. But here's my question, <laughs> okay? And here's the question for the audience as we clip this. Is was I in the wrong? Like, should I have said, like, would you, have, what circumstances do you say yes to a woman? She's probably in her 50s in a hospital gown. I was like, man, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, that's scary. Like, I could have taken her to the, but I was like, this is kind of scar- scary. I don't think I'm ever taking anyone in my car, ever. Ever. What circumstances no. would you say yes? I would not. I am someone's mother, and I need to return home. And people are crazy, <laughs> and it's Texas, so they all have guns. Although she didn't have any, she have no bags with her. Or no, anything. she was just in a straight like she just got. So out of the she hospital. just skipped the bill in the hospital. So that's why I was like, why is she still in the hospital again? Because like, she skipped out on the hospital. I felt bad. I wanted to like maybe I should got an Uber or something. I don't know. Well, that would even been maybe. Maybe you put someone else in this sketchy situation. I don't know, but Uber drivers are signing up for that, though. Yeah, they're also hitting, but they, super dangerous profession, really. If you think about it, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Like you get in a stranger's car. Yeah, you, you roll know? up. Are you here for Lori? Okay, great. Let's yeah. do this. Or you've heard of like the crazy Uber drivers, or that, like yeah, it's a thing. Our world is crazy, and this is why going to Dallas proper is. So that's the question Avoid for the it. audience. Would you say yes to that? Would you would just walk away? Like, what's the thing? Like, what what do people think? I don't know. I also wouldn't approach someone and ask a random someone to give me a ride. You well, if you're okay, think about it. If you're in a hospital gown, something crazy just happened. You're probably down for a lot. Well, of if stuff. she's not back in her street clothes, she skipped out on that hospital. Is that what happens? Because they always take the gown. They right? take the gown back, and she would have had her belongings. They didn't give her her belongings, so she's just. She just dipped on the hospital. So she just, so is that what happened? I didn't process this. She just got, if she's in a gown, she just in a hospital. She, she, got she probably got some sort of help and then bugged out. Have you ever met anybody who's done that? No, but I have been re-watching Grey's Anatomy. So I've been watching a lot of a hospital lot of stuff. stuff. Um, wow. Which is not great. 
wow. really, because, you know, like I just in my current predicament, like they, a lot of people die on that show. A lot of people die. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta, uh. I gotta find happier programming. Well, you want to dive into the week? What's been cooking up? Well, or wait. you got more, got more stuff? Um. So did you? So I, d- I do want to talk real quick. I watched something on a conspiracy theory thing online, and I had right. posted about. It, I reposted it. That there is a pandemic every 100 years. No way. They went through like 14, 20, 15, 20, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 2020 with the coronavirus. And it was always in the 20th year. And it was like smallpox and rubella and Spanish flu and like all these, which I mean, I didn't fact check it, but like that's wild. I ask a lot of people, and so I want to ask you this. Do you think that that was the only pandemic we'll see in our lifetime? No, I think there will be more. I think there will be more, too. Yeah, yeah. And I ask this, too, because we work with a lot of nurses. I ask this to a lot of nurses, and they're like, no, absolutely not. I think that now the ante has been upped because there's biological warfare. Mm -hmm. And if you believe that the coronavirus was, like, released on us, which a lot of people do. Like manufactured. Yeah, that it was, like... In a lab somewhere, maybe in Wuhan Wuhan or China. And so maybe there, maybe not. But like, I think we'll probably see another pandemic. But I thought that was so crazy, which makes me, which begs the question, do pandemics happen to kind of thin out the population? Oh, are they manufactured? Maybe. I mean, I don't know if they, I mean, I guess maybe they always could. I don't know. But that's the question. question. Well, here's the thing. Wasn't it, like, not as many people died in COVID that were reported? Well, I think, so my understanding of it I mean, is. It wasn't, like, a money grab, like, all these hospitals. My like, understanding, yes, there was a there was a there more of a payout if they died because of coronavirus. But, but the problem was the, I, my understanding is that the reporting was off because if you died of other reasons but you had coronavirus, they counted it as a death due to COVID. Mm-hmm. Even though you may have had a heart attack, but you had COVID symptoms. Yeah, yeah. Now they reported it as a COVID death, but it really wasn't a COVID death, if that makes sense. And so I think the numbers were super inflated because something like they got, I don't even know, again, this was years ago, but like they got like $17,000 or something if they, there was someone who died because of COVID. Like the hospitals gained money for whatever reason. And so... They, they were really incentivized to kind of inflate the number. Wow. Right? Yeah. And so it's just, it's crazy to me. Maybe it was a both thing. Maybe it was to, because you know people say that, like, something will happen in the news or something happened in the world, but it's, like, to turn our attention away from, like, what's actually happening. So maybe it was a money grab. Maybe it was to control population. Maybe there was, like, laws Well, passed. the world is for sure overpopulated. Everyone will say it. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, because... Western medicine has improved so much. We don't die. Like, our life expectancy is so much greater. People aren't dying in their 30s like in the Jesus days, right? And so there are so many. Not the 30s. No, Jesus Mm -hmm. died at, like, 36 or something. I just feel like you called out Jesus just like, out of anybody in history you could have called out, Well, you win. Everybody (laughs) knows him. Everybody does know him, yeah. So, and people died young then. But, like, yeah. now people's life expectancy is so much greater because yeah, yeah. Me- medicine has improved. And so we find ourselves at a place where what if it really is an attempt to kind of thin out the population? Wow. Right? That's kind of terrifying. Yeah, and like, about. all these thoughts are terrifying, but, like, what do we do as people? Like, we can't vote our way out of it because everybody's, like, corrupt. No, like, and because we there's so much we just don't what know. What do we do? Do we just, like, go... Like live in a shelter, or like get like go live off the grid. No, like is there any way? Maybe uh, off the grid. Off the grid okay. sounds kind of awesome, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like those it. houses you can buy from Amazon and just drop it in the middle of nowhere. Like that I'm seems like, great. Well, you can buy a house on Amazon. You can buy a house on Amazon. No way. It's like a fabricated home, and it comes like shipped to you, and you just like pop it, pop up the walls. Like it's a trailer. Wild. Like a no, they look really nice. Really, tiny homes are really intriguing to me. Like I would. I way too much crap, but I would love to live in a tiny home. No way. And be off the grid. Wow, maybe you have to do that, but so I, I, I do have another interesting story before we go into insurance because there has been a lot that happened this week. But okay. I have a the healthcare system is broken. Okay. 
All right. So tell us about yesterday it. I went to physical therapy. Okay. Because with us, one of the surgeries that I had, they took 17. So in, in total, they removed 22 lymph nodes from the left side of my body. How many lymph nodes are there? I have no idea. Okay. I think very lots. I, thousands. Lot of, okay. I'm not really sure. So 22 lymph nodes means like the lymphatic system is what moves all things through your body. Sure. Right? And so like fluids and whatnot that make up your body are moved through the lymphatic system. And so having 22 removed means that the whole left side of my upper left quadrant of my body is kind of compromised because your body doesn't, as smart as your body is, this is intriguing to me, because really the human body is designed to be a self-healing kind of machine, right? If you give it the right things and you don't give it chemicals and pesticides and pollute it like we do, it will self-heal most things, right? It's kind right. of set up that it's it's a brilliant mechanism. Well, you're even though your body does not in this situation find a new way to reroute yeah. and move that stuff through your body. So you you run the risk of potentially fluids building up on that side of your body. And so I have to go to physical therapy and I have to have like lymphatic massage and I have to do certain exercises to try to like make sure I wear tape most of the time like every time she changes it out during physical therapy I wear tape to like help move fluids through right so yesterday I met with a, a person who came to do like a, a medical device person who came to give me this like tutorial because they're ordering a machine for me that will do this at home and I'm supposed to wear it for like an hour a day for the next several years, right? Mm -hmm. So this machine, ultimately the one that I need to have is like a vest and it will like, it's like a vest and you zip it up and it kind of massages and mm -hmm. like your whole whatever, right? Like this whole upper body. But in order, and it's a $4,000 machine. Wow. And in order for the insurance to approve it, mm -hmm. I first have to take the $2,000 less half the cost version. Oh, wow. Which is the worst thing that I could use because the this one is just a sleeve and it's massaging, which like now that I've had all of this happen on the left side of my body, I can never have my blood pressure taken on this side of my body. I can never give blood from this side of my body. Are you serious? Like I'm not supposed to, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm supposed to not get sun exposure for the next five years on this side of my body. Like I'm supposed to really, this side of my body, treat it with like kid gloves, right? So the point being this, this sleeve that they want me to wear that massages your arm is the worst thing that I could put on this side of my body because it will potentially cause the fluid to pool and like cause lymphedema, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to take the two thousand dollar machine, and I and insurance is paying for it, and I I own it. It's my machine. Yeah. But I can't use it. I'm supposed to use it, and then they report back that it doesn't work. So then the insurance company has to pay for the four thousand dollar machine. So they're in turn going to spend six grand wow. where they could have spent four. Yeah. And I have a second machine that it's not like you're leasing it. You buy I it. will own it. Yeah. And can't ever use it. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do with this gigantic device? How big is it? I mean, the, she, it like has a, a like mechanism that you had like hook hoses to, and then you have to hook oh the hoses. So it's, it's kind of a thing. Uh -huh. And so I'll, I'll probably just do, like donate it to, cause there are plenty of people that need that, that won't, you know, can't afford it or whatever. And I'll never be able to use it. So I'll probably just donate it. But like, what a, what a broken, this is the kind of stuff that's really, really wrong. You know, cause they can look at my condition and everything that I've been through and say, well, that's a bad move. We shouldn't do that. Cause they're kind of putting me in harm's way really, if they want me to, like, go and use this and show that it's not working mm -hmm. in order to approve the twice expensive, more expensive machine. But really, they're going to be out two grand more than they need to for all of this extra work. And it puts me 
four weeks longer from getting what I actually need because I'm supposed to take this one, use it for four weeks, report that it doesn't work before I get the second one. But, like, these are the stupid kind of silly things that happen with health insurance and why it's so busted, right? That and, like, we were talking about the weight loss, like the Ozempic thing, right? right? And how... People, what'd you say? What was your your joke? Let me oh, get on like, a plan. Oh, like, can I get this $1,000 med for, like, Nothing. 20 bucks? Right, or, yeah. right. Like, and there's so much. They are so quick to just give that away now. Like, that is, and, and like, I just feel like it's another one of those things we don't know enough about, and there's a lot of stuff that's coming out right now that sure. says that it's really bad. But, like, I had to talk to the doctor about, like, weight loss because, like, I – needed to lose weight before, but I put on more weight because the steroids have that they give you with every single treatment make you gain weight. And so I'm like, I have to do something when this is over because this is not, I don't enjoy this life. And she's like, well, we've had a lot of success with semiglutide. So she like immediately went there. She went there. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, wrong girl. Like I don't, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that because like there's just so much you're messing with your body's ability to produce insulin, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I'm like, I don't I don't think that sounds like a good idea. Like, what else can we do kind of thing? Yeah. And so, but, like, I just had someone reach out to me five minutes ago before we started that was, like, I need something that will cover weight loss medication. So, yeah, like, everybody is out. Trying to grab. Trying to okay, get. Okay, here's a very controversial idea about it. Okay, you know how, like, in the, was it the, 50s, 60s, whatever, people smoke cigarettes, and then, like, they thought Six, it was good. 60s, 50s. 60s, and then it would turn bad, right? And now there's, like, vaping. People, like, are seeing, like, with Juul, there's all those docs about Juul and, like, how, like, people got hurt from taking it, but they didn't realize how bad it was. Yeah. Do you think these, like, weight loss medicines, like these injections, will fall in the same category? Do you think um, it will be, like, It bad? never gets the same attention as, like, I mean, vaping and smoking are clearly bad things for you. Clearly bad, yeah. And they fall in a different category because they're completely, because they're targeted at youth and, like, whatever. Sure. But I think, so, I, and I, I never think that medications kind of get the same rap. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's already a lot of stuff. Um, Jillian Michaels. The girl from, um... Like the biggest loser or whatever. Biggest right? loser, yeah, yeah, yeah. She um she's intense. She is super intense and she did a whole thing on it on um Real Time with Bill Maher, like his Friday show. Oh, okay. And she I think she was on his podcast and she talked about it and then she went on like as the he has like a preliminary guest that's not the panel. He has mm -hmm. someone that he talks to for like five minutes at the beginning of the show and then he talks to the panel and it's all politics and and you have to be really smart to be on the panel. So like Yeah. He only has certain people that make it there, but he'll have, like, celebrities. You know, like, Ray Romano was on there. Like, the people – Jillian Michaels, um, I think, recently had um, Al – not Al Pacino, um, Robert De Niro. Like, he'll just have people, right? Sure. A lot of celebrities, but he had her on, and she goes hard into and talks about some of the, like, actual results and what the harm is and the data. Yeah. I, so I think there's a lot of stuff that's kind of coming out. But I, I'm surprised at how – simple it is to get anymore like i mean you can order these things now shipped to you i i think probably some sort of different formulary or like it's a semi-glutide yeah. but it's not the ozempics and wagovis of the world but there are ways to get it otherwise and it's just it just it's like it's really they, they everything says the minute you stop you gain all the weight back they you know people are taking this stuff for, like, super long term, and it's just, it can be really harmful. So I think it's just about asking questions, but yeah, it's such a craze. Crazy. So crazy. You know what else is crazy? What else is crazy? The world of insurance. The world of insurance. So let's, let's talk in. about this week has been, so you did a little mm -hmm. traveling this week. Yeah, so we went up to uh, Minnesota. Your poor dogs have been boarded so much. I know, man. They we have stop. to think you don't love them. And boarding's, like, expensive, It's too. expensive. It's expensive. We're just, just trying to make it work, man. Uh, but went up to Minnesota. There is a new carrier launching who's building, like, a gap plan who wants to, like, sell a bunch. And the people who started, we have a really good partnership with the company. They helped start that company. And, now they're and moving on to the next it. thing. They're moving on to the next thing. And so what's interesting about, like, 
the insurance world is like all these like carrier boys, all these like people at the top, they just all travel around the country like every week. And, and they like, all know each other. They all know each other. Everybody works. Very incestuous. Everybody boys works club. with each other. Everybody's trying to do deals. Like everybody's trying to make it work. So Minnesota is not like, I'm sorry if, you, if anybody lives in Minnesota, but like. Well, a lot of people live in Minnesota. Okay. So bless you. But it was like, I don't know. I don't know if it was the move. Like living there, it looked kind of like rustic. It's very industrial. I mean, industrial. it's very Midwestern, right? Very it's, Midwest. Yeah. it's the Midwest. So, like, so if like you're the Midwest, you know. So I'm sure the people were nice. Yeah, yeah, people were very nice. Mall of America was like. Well, Mall of America was a thing when malls were a thing. Yeah, right? so I could see like in the early two thousands, like a outdoor lifestyle center now, yeah, yeah, yeah. which you know. We kind of have always had here, just because it's hot here all the time. Yeah. But, like, in a Minnesota, you need a mall. It's snowy and crappy yeah, there. Yeah, it's, like, snowing all the time. Yeah, so, so. you want to be indoors. But, like, Mall of America was a thing when malls were a thing. But yeah. malls are a dying business now. Yeah. So here was the big – here's the kind of the big pitch that's going down. It's, like, there's all these organizations at this, at this meeting, and the big pitch that we're working towards like, the offer is, like, so, mo- so you have to understand if you're in the insurance game, most of these people, they just build products, right? Like they don't sell it. So they build a product, okay? And they're like, we think this product's going to sell amazing, right? And then they have to go convince brokerages to sell their stuff, sure. right? And the thing with like under 65, so you have two markets with health insurance. You have people under 65, like that's like its own game. And then you have people over 65, and that's like its own game, A right? totally different game. It's a totally different game. And so with under 65 game, most brokers, like, they only usually sell, like, a couple plants, like, three or four carriers. Because you, that's all you can stomach. That's if all you, you can, If yeah. you have new agents coming in and you're trying to teach them a slew of products, yeah. your turn, you will overwhelm them and your turnover will be insane. It's really crazy, but also there's only, like, a couple plants a that are of good. things that are worth it. <laughs> They're actually good, like... Easy to sell, actually, or oh, sorry, let me start off. Good for the consumer. It's, like, actually, like, benefit. Good platform to, it's, s- it's to easy get it in their hands. Because some platforms, like, suck. Like they're Tech re- is so expensive, and that's not where their focus is. They're so focused like, on products, yeah. So sometimes the tech is awful, so you can't even sell like it. Like, our best partner, their tech is terrible. Yeah. So it's just very antiquated. It's antiquated, but it's, it, they're, we're working on it. But, um... So their whole thing is, like, we're going to build a product and try to get these brokers to sell their stuff. But, like, brokers, like, regular brokers just want, like, the best plan for their client, easy to sell it, and, like, they get paid, you know? Like, decent. Sure. And so a lot of these new products that are coming out, the benefits are okay, and they're not as good as some plans, so that's, like, an X. Their commission is lower, and the platform, you have to go to a, sometimes a different platform, right? And so um, I think for a lot of these partners, these new people trying to blow up, it's going to be really difficult for them to, like, just get people to sell their stuff. So, and I hope it works. Like, I, I think they have some some niche things that will work and some some partnerships that don't even sell their type of stuff that will. And so I think there's some things that work there. But the pitch from us is we'll essentially build them a call center. So, like, if they potentially throw cash down or throw, if we build a partnership, make a new entity, we'll build them a call center and a marketing team and, like, a all the, all the infrastructure you need to sell their stuff, like, at a high volume. So that's the pitch. So we'll see if, like, that offer, like, works. But there's like so how long, two to three orgs that because there's a lot to get a product to market. Yeah, yeah. So how long have they been in? Like, how long is the development process? How long does with that with this last one? It's been a year. Like since okay. like they said, hey, we want to do this. Well, and so my guess is, if I'm those guys, it's because I knew that the ruling was coming, like the market was changing, mm-hmm. and so they tried to go build something. That would fit the need once all of that happens in September, right? Like that was. Well, this is a gap. This is like an accident and critical illness plan. So it's like just supplements. Mm -hmm. It's not like short term. Yeah, but but supplements make sense when everyone gets pushed to the marketplace. 
Oh, sure. Yeah, people drop off, like, to build another SUP plan. Right. To, yeah, so that's, like, that's their play, is, like, we want to build the best SUP plan, but, you know. Yeah. It's so, really hard to compete against the top, like, players that have all the sales because they're, like, they pay the most and they have the best products and the easiest platforms, you know? So to, like, beat them, you got to beat those three things, you know? Sure. Um, and so... We'll, we'll see if those offers work, but, like, it's it's hard to go to, like, a top carrier and do the deals we're trying to – like, it's not hard. It's, like, impossible. Like, you have to have, like, tens of thousands of apps and, like, a really good relationship sure. to make it work versus, like, some of these smaller players, you might need a couple thousand, you know, and a good relationship. So it's, like, easier to get in the door. Yeah, but if you – again, if your product is confusing – Exactly. Or you can't find the soldiers on the ground to like go go sell the put stuff. It in. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so how yeah. many brokerages were there? Um, okay, so there was um, a healthcare company which has eight thousand contracted agents, but they only have like three to four hundred writing agents. So there's a lot of improvement there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one with fifteen thousand agents, but I think you only have a couple thousand writing. And there was one with like four to five call call centers under them. I think there was like a hundred call center agents. So and then there was us. <laughs> so explain that. How why the big discrepancy with these agencies where they have all of these contracted agents but only so many writing. Yeah, so here's the deal. So you kind of have two different like models like in sales of insurance. Okay. You got what's called like a 1099 model. And so it's these brokerages that recruit essentially independent contractors, right? And so they're like, hey, Lori, um, we'll, like, recruit you, right, to sell this product. But, like, we don't – there's not a lot of control. Like, you get to work your own hours. You have to provide the lead. Self-motivated. You have to, like – you, you're essentially making your own business. You have to make your own marketing, your own lead flow, software, admin, Godspeed. Like everything, yeah. everything. And the percentage of people that can actually do that, like, well, is like less than 5%. But the incentive is? The incentive is you get paid most of the commission from the effort, and the brokerage above that person takes like a, a small, split. small cut. Takes a small cut of it, right? And so they're in, it's a volume play. They're like, hey, we want to recruit as many agents as possible because we know only like – 5% of people, 10% can pull it off, can pull it off. Um, and so it's, a, you have to recruit like thousands of agents, mm -hmm. which is like, so essentially thing. those agents get contracted and they're sitting on their roster, but they're not writing. They're not writing. Correct. So it's the 15,000 versus the 2000 that are actually putting up numbers, putting up numbers. Correct. And then you kind of have the benefit to that though, as a brokerage is like, you got to pay to recruit people, but you don't, ha you're usually not paying Your lead cost flow. Out is not yeah, like yeah, exactly. Per agent. Right. And then you kind of have like the call center, which we're trying to build. Right. And that's like, it's the flip. So you provide everything. You provide the lead flow, people looking for that product. You provide the software, the hardware, the hardware, the office, um, a lot of meals. A lot of meals, like <laughs> everything, right? And so, like, it's Sometimes flipped. you're buying the licenses. You're buying the licenses, so it's expensive. And you're paying them a salary. You're paying or them an hourly. hourly or plus, like, commission type of. And often, and depending on your headcount, potentially benefits and exactly. contests and prizes. and It's a thing. Yeah. It's a big thing. And so, but it, like, a couple of call center agents, if they have the right system, can outperform like a hundred brokers, you know, and um, it it also provides control because you can be like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna push as long as it's a good product, we're gonna push this product, and you. you can control the environment because they have to clock in and out, and yeah. that's the hardest thing with self employed people is getting them to work, right? And, and that's the thing is like ninety five percent of people should be in a call center, like should be in a system that all they have to do is sell. Like they have lead flow there, the tech there, everything is laid out for them. Like most people can't, like it's taken us hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, like long days. And we have to cat, we have to like, 
we have to fund everything, right? Sure. To make it. And so you, you essentially have to build like teams. You have to build a marketing team, an admin team, a sales team. Like you got to like do all these different roles. And for a new agent who's just trying to learn how to like help and someone. do all that for themselves. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Or it's going to be like a very few percentage of people that do. So I think what we're building is like, we're trying to build a call center where we can control everything, get people actually making money, and then they can graduate into like a 10 night, like a, their own agency, right? But now they have the tech, the lead flow, the systems, everything to actually the make know it how work. The, the know the how to make it learning work. Learning how to sell insurance. So that's a whole that's a whole thing. Other thing. And learning how to market insurance is like a whole other skill Don't set. Don't you ever think like when you're when I think about training new people, because we've been away from it for a while because we've been doing all the other side of it, and I think, again, about going in and training someone, and I'm like, oh, my God, we it's know lot, so yeah. much stuff. It's hard How to not overwhelm someone. Yeah. someone all this stuff? Well, that's the move. That's essentially what we're building is, like, we're trying to build, like, small call centers or small teams. Like, one team just focuses on, like, one or two products, and they go and they, like, elevate to another team, right? And so it's essentially building, like, three to five different call centers, small teams. And so it's easy to onboard someone. It has someone. to be bite-sized pieces. It has that, to be very that has been, We had a big conversation about this yesterday. As yeah. we're, we're at a place where we probably will have people that we're hiring on shortly. Like, it's definitely on the horizon, right? And so Yeah, as long as we <laughs> get our tech and conversions, yeah. So it's on the horizon. Yeah. And so there was uh, some dialogue between us about, well, what does that really look like? Like, if we're going to bring people on, how do we control the turnover, right? Because the, the biggest cost to an organization is turnover of employees because you invest so much money on the front end of bringing someone on. There's the recruiting of them, the time spent, like, training them, and then if – and the expense, and if they don't stick around, yeah. you just ate all of that, Right. You ate all of it. And yeah. so <laughs> yeah. it's to not and, – and insurance is so much information. It really can be like drinking from the fire hose, right? Like it's so much – if you don't dilute it and give them bite-sized pieces, most people are not retaining all of that. Like, and in fact, I think I saw something that said that people – like when you're training, they're they're like actually retaining eleven percent or something really really some very small percentage number, and so you have to say it to them multiple times or give them a platform where it's recorded and they can revisit it at their own pace. Yeah, but like that's I I know when I was training when I did a lot of training at the other company, I just felt like. Oh my God, it's like Groundhog Day. Like I'm just saying the same thing over, over and, and over, over and over again. Yeah. And then when people would come to me, I'd be like, what do you mean you don't know? We just talked about that. Like, so it's, it, it can be really taxing and very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, that's why I keep it super simple. And that's like the pro of, and I don't agree with how they did it, but building a captive organization, just selling like one, I'm not saying we want to build a captive organization, but just selling one product because it's like, it's still challenging. You still have a lot to turn over. But, like, it's better than selling 40. You know what I mean? Then it's almost game over. Like, so have a team focus on one thing. Yes, there good. is. And get really great at it. And, and they, you know, they were very big on, like, have a script and have, like, a down pat presentation. And you could because that's all they were selling. Right, you that that strategy works when you only have one product you're pushing. Yeah, but like I could never give someone a script for what we do right now. Well, it's not really a script, but it's like an outline. Like here's the stages of a call, like intro, qualify. Yes, but that's not what. I, but you, but you can't do that in a way that someone could verbatim remem like memorize a script like what we were taught to do there. Yeah. Because there are too many variables and we're like, depending on what comes at us, we're taking them in a hundred different directions based on their needs. Which is why you need a team just right. so based you on have, the lead flow. Right. Yeah. So you have very small bites. Like all they learn is ACA and this one dental product. Like that has to be bi really bite-sized pieces for it to work for someone who's brand new to the game. Like it's so much... 
So we had yeah. some dialogue, some contact with some people from that captive agency, which I thought this was kind of an interesting thing to come out of that meeting that um, they talked about, you know, their CEO is. There's a lot you said about that. <laughs> do what? There's a lot that could be said about well, that. Well, so their CEO, they, so they, they were acquired by United Healthcare. Yeah. Five years ago or so. Five right? plus, yeah. Ish. And so United Healthcare picked them up, which is so wild to me because United Healthcare is probably the most conservative of organizations for insurance that we work with, right? Yeah. So conservative, so by the rules, so like big into audits and like compliance and like very straight edged, right? Which makes sense. That's how they're they're huge. They've got a lot on the line. They've got yeah. a lot of, a lot at um, risk. yes, yeah. a lot of risk. But then they pick up this company that's rogue and their agents are out saying whatever, <laughs> like yeah. crazy stuff. And their reviews are terrible and just didn't really make sense, but they were super profitable. So like that was what yeah. blinded yeah, yeah, yeah. them and made that deal happen, right? Yeah. But part of the deal was that the CEO had to sign on for 10 years of continued leadership on under this contract, right? And so he's probably halfway through that requirement um, and so the belief is from these agents that were, had been around for, I think they actually worked with him at his previous organization. So like they've, they've known this person for a long time and he did with another organization kind of the same thing. They were a captive agency and they, he left, right. And, and took a lot of people from, well, they sold it. So they sold it to, um, a private equity firm. They turned that company to Health Markets, which is the other biggest like captive agency out there. So this like one man, not just one man, he's Him like his, his little posse, cronies, yeah, his, like little, his people, like, his people. They built like like two of the biggest captive agencies. Captive agencies. Well, they in just America. washed, rinsed, and repeat. They did like, the they same did system, yeah. but they did it faster, faster, and, and very profitable both times, yeah. which made them desirable. And so they like the belief is from brokers that have done this with him before is that when he retires in X amount of years, that it will end up being the same thing, that everybody from that organization will end up going out to be brokers because I guess they think he takes it all with him when he goes, which I think is... I think they'll just bring in another leader to try to run it, but that that whole band is like a, like a cult following after him. So it's like, yeah, I wonder what will happen or... Yeah, they can't imagine a future. I mean, that is leadership at its finest, really. Like, yeah, if you have given them such strong Kool Aid that they are like, they'll follow. We can't, we can't do it without <laughs> you. Yeah. But they just think that it all disbands if when he goes, which is interesting because his number two, they kind of several of his number two, three, four, and five, they pushed out. Over the past year or so, right? Yeah, a couple that's of super, years. super fascinating. So I don't know, man. We'll see, but it's definitely the, and the thing with the captive organization is hard because, like, okay, let's say you're an agency and you're like, you write like a hundred million dollars. You like you crushing. Um, you like your all of your income is tied into that carrier. You're essentially putting your eggs in one basket. So if you leave, you walk away from like a huge book of business. Like the way they have uh, things structured is like they and they will come after you. If yeah, you yeah. Try to take those clients back. Or if, but here's the thing: if you're a big agency owner and like you have agents under you, you can't like take your agents with you. They'll like take your all your commissions. So like, oh, yeah. That's the hard thing is like if you just if you decided to build an agency with them. You are like you're pretty much done. Like you, you would have, have to, to walk, start at zero. You have started to zero and walk away from like millions of dollars. You know. Yeah. So you're <laughs> totally incentivized to stay uh, there. Yeah. I mean, they've built. It's it is beautiful on their side. They built a contract and an organization that is very much in their favor, not <laughs> in favor of yeah. the. Yeah. 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 And so all, for all of these leaders that work for them that are like, I'm an agency owner, I'm like, until you're not. Because you, when you leave them, you are at zero. You start from scratch. Yeah, yeah. And, and for some of these people, if you've done it for long enough, that's an exhausting thought. Like, it was kind of exhausting. Oh, my gosh, yeah. For us, when we left. To yeah, imagine think, if there was, like, 100 agents there and, like, there was millions of dollars. Like, that would have been, like, 
even harder. Well, and they also built like a bro- a bonus program, like a retention program. So yes. like each year you stay there or the year that you stay, they have this big bonus. Like it was from the previous year. Like yeah, like how only, much you, you get sold. It, you'd get it like farmed out. Like so they're really smart. Out. Like they've done it very really smart. Like very smart. You know, <laughs> like they know they know what they're doing. And then they have these super cultish meetings where it's yeah. like rah rah, and the CEO makes out with you on stage. <laughs> and I mean, I told you like it's yeah. just very like cultish, but yeah. Yeah, so their belief is that it all goes away when he goes away, which I think. I don't think that will happen. I think they'll just, like, either an internal person will take over. Except they fired all of the internal people. Well, I think there's a couple people There's left. a couple. Yeah, but, but who knows? But, but, how, but how secure do those people feel? I don't know, man. If every all their brothers and sisters around them are getting, like. <laughs> They're getting chopped. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's in, And a lot of them are in their, like, 60s. So maybe, like, they're just like, hey. We're done. Not worth it. Like, do they want to go, like, keep a company running and go build another, like... Well, it's a very If you've already done it twice... But it, but they're making money hand over yeah, fist. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I don't know. And they seem very monetarily motivated. Sure. So, I don't know. But I just think it's kind of interesting to think, like, what will happen. I mean, I guess that's immortality realized when... People just think the world comes to an end when you leave. I don't know. Like, he has a cult following, so hats off to him. Um, but I just think that's ki- that's really interesting, right? They just, like, some of these people can't see a future without this person. Isn't that wild? Yeah, it is wild. But so it went really good. So that's what we're pitching. We're pitching to essentially build call centers for, for these carriers. We'll see – if anybody takes up on this offer, if not, we'll just continue our same game plan, like and and keep dominating. So you know? we talked a little bit about that part last week that we're taking on some debt to yeah line of credit grow some other like some parts of the business a little bit faster. Yeah. So like, there's a plan A, B, and C. I would say that are in or the or a mixture of t- a couple plans. Yeah. So we'll see which one comes to fruition. But I think that that's probably another big building lesson is you've got to have a lot of irons in the fire and you have to have oh a my plan gosh, A, yeah. B, and C because you don't know things. Just n- we don't know what you don't know. Yeah, and things just almost never pan out like the way that you think they're going to, or they take longer. Or and here's the thing we. Lauren and I realized, I think this week is like, as you hire people, like you, om- like you kind of serve them. Like you, you have to work care, for them, work for them to make sure they're happy, they're flowing, so they can like feel good about what they're doing. But and you're dealing with people, which is a very um, variable. Tedious. It's a variable. You never know what's gonna happen. You know, so you and get- everyone has to be managed differently. Yeah, yeah. So everyone just- requires a different level of you. Yeah, or a different so version of you. It's kind of fascinating. As you build teams, you have to like you have to organize it well, right. It was another part of our conversation this week because I said to Dakota because I I have been in some sort of leadership since I was right out of college or in college actually, and so I I feel like I've had a lot more experiences and runs around the block in this fashion and saying to Dakota like this is something with leadership that you like you have to understand, like, this is why I say to you, like, the bigger we get, we have to be able to scale and have people that can do the selling to free us up to just do all of this other stuff. Because between HR and (laughs) meetings with carriers and, like, product or project development and project execution. Software and... Right, all of these other things that really take up so much time the fact that we are trying to do those things and sell, it's exhausting. Like, it's too much. And you're never going to be really the best you can be at any of these jobs when you're doing when you're spread so thin, right? Yeah. And so we have to scale and have people that are making the sales to free us up to do all of the other things because there's so much to do when you're building – when you're trying to build like a world dominating <laughs> organization. organization. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To just so, everything. But the people part of it is it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. And people are well, what's the tip? An How do you what's the what's the solution? The solution is to set people what we've learned, set expectations for people, make sure people are in contracts that like protect both sides. Like not an unfair contract, but just like on paper of the relationship. Really important. 
have everything organized. So if someone leaves or something happens, yeah. it doesn't wreck the whole infrastructure. We made that mistake. Um, what else? I also think like um, you have to meet people where they are. Yeah, that's a like, big one. Yeah, you just everyone is on a different journey, and you have to understand their journey and what their needs are. And everyone wants to be managed differently. Yeah, you can't just blanket do one thing for everyone. I also don't think you can be everything to everyone, right? Like you have yeah. to, and, and that's been, that's probably a lesson that I learned in the last one. We're so small here because we're doing it all together that we, as we grow, we need to be careful of is like, I don't really want to be these people's friends. Cause that just makes it messy. <laughs> you yeah. know, like it makes it challenging to do the work you need to do the other organization encouraged us so much to be like, they would always say like, it's a family because again, it was that cult, like it's not, it's not a career. It's a lifestyle or like whatever, <laughs> whatever stuff they would say, you yeah, know, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but like they would encourage you to do that. And so I did a lot of that because it's, I always work so much that it's been my tendency to be close with the people that I work with, but I feel very differently about it at this point in my life because it was such a muddy situation when I left the other place because of it. I don't want to be friends with people. I want to do the work we're supposed to do, and I want to have good relationships. But that's some of what we're dealing with right now is that it's been too close, and now it's hard to back off and manage people because we were too close. And so it's something to be mindful of as we move forward that your work friends are your work friends. Yeah. And you're outside of work and friends. And it, it gets weird in the 1099 like world because people aren't making money till they sell stuff and sure. if, if you're like leading them a lot of times and you're friends with them like hey i need money and then they ask for money oh my god and then so it's like you and, 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 yeah you know you know this better than oh i do yeah. yeah 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 so that gets weird that gets weird like fast it, money always is weird between people and with these 10 organizations they show your paycheck oh my god. so they'll put it up in front of like all these people I who are struggling meetings, and my check was up there and <laughs> i could like clockwork Someone was going to come to me after that meeting and ask for money. Yeah, yeah. So they, like, make and, you and a my, target. My check would be up there, and there was my address. <laughs> yeah. And there was how much I made. It was so oh, weird. And yeah. I came from corporations where if you told what you made, they would fire you. Like they you, fire you? Yeah, because you will have – you'll create this war – like if someone is in the same position as you, and they're getting paid, and more. they're getting paid, like it will, ah, that makes and sense. yeah, it will cause like dissension, yeah. And so you could get really, maybe not fired immediately, but you could get like really reprimanded for sharing what you made. And then I came to this organization where they were talking all the time about what I made, and it made me so well. A lot of people in sales organizations like they'll go on Insta and like post their top agents' paychecks or whatever, yeah. but they'll put the name. I just find that weird. Like. Maybe it's blank uncomfortable. It, yeah, just blink out their name or something. I don't know. It's just like well, it's it, just, it makes that person like a target. Well, almost. it also in that organization, what I felt was all we did was talk about money. Yeah, versus like helping people. Yeah, it, there that was not really their focus. It, their their message was helping other people every day, but that's not how it felt to be inside of it. It was like we worship like the almighty dollar, right? Frick. And yeah. like. You know, that's sell sell a lot of supplements because that's where your money's at. And what do you like? You have zero dollars in supplemental sales. What are you even doing? Like, you know that that was just their yeah their message was so monetarily driven. And look, oh look at this person, and they bought a new whatever. It was just kind of gross in that way. Yeah, and that doesn't feel like it, the left side was saying a totally different story. Like what they put in front of people was very different than how they were actually living their life. Yeah, yeah. a lot of sales organizations are like that. For sure. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, it didn't feel great. It didn't feel great. But we got we got a game plan. We got funnels cooking. We got ads cooking. We got people. We're trying to get people in who actually need insurance. Totally. Or different products and actually solve their problem. And we're trying to source some different products that make sense when all these changes happen because the world of insurance really does change in September. So yeah. go look at your plan and make sure you are covered. And if I haven't preached it enough, supplements are the best thing for the consumer. Like I am living proof of what a good supplemental package can do in a really tricky time. Yeah, man, paying nine, we talked about this last week, but paying nine, 10K 
Is it twice. Like, and yeah. I, I had to do it two years in a row. Hopefully I won't next year. But because of it starting at the in the, the very end of the third quarter last year and wrapping all the way through the middle of this year, I met my max out of pocket two years in a row. That's eighteen thousand plus dollars that was required. Clip of me. it, clip it, and let's let's run an ad on that. That's crazy. It's wild, but the truth is, I've obviously been paid more money than I've paid out. Yeah, because, because I was well protected by supplements. You never know when something's going to happen. You man. never know, but I think the 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 thing that we do know is if you live long enough. You're going to have a critical illness. You're going to cross paths with a critical illness. So why would you not have that coverage? If you live long enough, well, eventually you're going to die. Why would you not have life insurance? That is an, an inevitability. It's going to happen. So, like, there are things that we just know are going to come about at some point. It's a, it's a matter of time. And so you have to plan ahead for that, right? Like, that is – those are the things that we know for sure. And so, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of supplements because they are – I mean, I have not felt the extra burden of the financial part of this, and I just have been able to focus on the emotional healing and yeah. the changes that were happening all around me. And thank God, because I can't imagine, do, like, having the added stress of, like, how am I going to pay for this? And do I have to make subpar choices or not do treatments because of financial reasons? What a crappy situation to be in. And or do I choose this or feed my family? Like that's crappy. I don't want that for anyone. And supplements are how you avoid that. It's how you avoid it, man. Yeah. So build a plan. Build a Boss package. Boss a plan. Boss a plan, baby. That's right. So we will be back next week with more Tales from the Crypt. Um, <laughs> write it down yeah so but thanks for listening if you yeah. hopefully you found some value and and a lot of this stuff translates to any business that you're as an entrepreneur trying to start it's like learn from our lessons and, or learn from like our hard lessons and avoid these pitfalls and we would love to talk to you about it we'll be back we're doing a, a, a series on small businesses kind of trying to highlight some things that are happening I mean America was built on the idea of entrepreneurship, right? That's and right, so, man. Um, That's right. We'll be back with some more entrepreneurial stories from next week and more insurance tales from the crypt. And if you found something valuable, please like, comment, share, do all the things. And That's right. Until next time, I am Lori. I'm Dakota. And thanks. We'll see you soon. We'll see Bye. you. Bye. Bye.